from Second Peter three, verse fourteen. Uh, well, I'll stop when I stop. It says, "Wherefore, bl- uh, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom." given unto him, hath written unto you. Now, that's the introduction, because I wanted you to hear what he was. This the Apostle Peter, talking about the Apostle Paul. And some of the people say that, oh, Paul was this, Paul was that, and they, 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 they take Paul to be too strict, and they don't want to obey uh, what the Apostle Paul says. Here is the Apostle Peter uh, encouraging everybody to do what? To obey and to follow what the Apostle Paul wrote. As verse 16 says, as also in all his epistles or writings, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned or unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. All right, so let me uh, read it from the King James because I want to get it uh, in a better uh, context. Second Peter 3, because this verse is something that uh, needs to be well understood. So verse uh, 16 also, it says, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But the end says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So uh, back to what we are reading in uh, 1 Corinthians 11. So the Apostle Peter now is confirming that what the Apostle Paul wrote, you know. So those who are here, he said those who are untaught. But I think nowadays it's not those who are untaught. It's the Christians who are twisting God's word. They don't want to follow it, so they say that, well, this is uh, about the Apostle Paul. But here is what the Apostle Paul wrote. He says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Which means, I am following Christ. Again, let me uh, go back to reading this in the uh, King James uh, Version to make it easier for everybody uh, of what the Apostle Paul is saying. So, he says, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. This is the Apostle Paul talking. He says we should imitate him. He follows Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them unto you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying or having his head covered you know, dishonors his head. And who is his head? His head is Christ. Man's head you know, is Christ. Which means Christ is under God. And if God is the head of all of us, you know, and from God we go to Christ, and from Christ we go to man, and the man we go to woman. So he is telling us, going in the hierarchy of how it should be. Verse 5 says, But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one as the same as if her head were shaved. So, for if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is a shame or shameful uh, for a woman to be shorn, or shaved, you know, 
let her be covered. So to go on and on and on, you know, it's been argued. And so we have God's word, but we want to twist it. We want to change it. We want to say that it's this and it's not this and that. What, why do we place the flesh? It is all the flesh. We want the flesh. Look at most churches. You know, even you find, uh, in, um, even they, they even go a step further. Women, women pastors, women preachers. And if what we just read, you know, the head of uh, a woman is man, and why should a woman be a pastor over a man? But it is allowed because, oh, the woman, uh, there was no man there, and that's why uh, the woman has to do it, or because the woman has learned, and that's why she was able to do that. It is fleshly, it is sinful, it is ungodly, it is an abomination. But we allow it. What, what did we uh, learn earlier? It says, be not be deceived. We are being deceived. And so we are all accepting it, just like people are, are, are forced to accept homosexuality and all this. And, and all of this is sin. The Bible says one has to be really following the scriptures. And if we allow the spirit of Christ to dwell in us, we are going to crucify the flesh. If you don't crucify the flesh and you allow the flesh to take control, then... For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, no, they are the sons of God. Verse 14 of Romans 8, 14. So if we are being told that as many are as led by the Spirit of God, no, they are the sons. When you say, again, the Bible, when it just uses one uh, to say sons, sons and daughters of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again. What is he talking about here? Christians, you know, we haven't received the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage was bondage we received in Father Adam in the Garden of Eden. That's where we were bound. That's where we were in bondage. That's where we were imprisoned, under, in, in prison uh, uh, to the devil. The devil imprisoned uh, Adam and Eve. When they sinned, they became slaves to the devil. And so from that time, you know, we have been in bondage. And we have had the spirit of bondage all this time. But once we become Christians, look at it yourself. Read it again yourself. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again. It's there. Which means that the spirit that we have received this time is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of freedom. The spirit to do what the, what, uh, the will of God is telling us to do. And what does the bondage uh, take us to? It takes us to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. What does adoption mean? We have become sons and daughters of Christ, of God. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's why now we can say our Father, which is our Heavenly Father. We are praying to God. We are praying to Christ. We are praying in the spirit of Christ, to God. So, we have been given the adoption. We've been adopted. And uh, I don't have time to go to all the other uh, passages about how we have been called. We have been uh, adopted. We've been made to, uh, to have the image. And we, we've read it. Verse 16 says, when he said the Spirit, this is capital S, the Holy Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This is, you can re look at it yourself. The spirit of Christ, the spirit of God is telling us that, you know, he's telling our spirit, which means the spirit that we have in us and that we are now children of God because we've been given the spirit of God. And if we've been given the spirit of God, we are supposed to be following the spirit of God, spirit of Christ to do those things which God has said. Verse 17 says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. What he's telling us is that 
if we have the flesh in us or the spirit of flesh trying to control us and, and we crucify it and we say no, no to the flesh, no to the popularity, no to being famous, no to being uh, having the same hairstyle with everybody in the whole world, no with all those things that people do, their faces, their eyelashes. Why do we have to have attachment to our, it's not only the hair, it's now to the, uh, to the eyes. Why? All because we see it on TV, other people are doing it, and we have to do it too. It is abomination. If God has given us the natural hair we have in our hairs, and why do we have to tell God that we don't want this hair? I want the attachment. That's better for me. That's we allow me to become better. The Bible is telling us, crucify it. If we crucify all these things to us, you know, what will happen? If we are children and we crucify all these worldly things, and we are going to live. Because if we are suffering, you know, suffering means that you know you are a Christian and people are doing it and they are enjoying it. But you suffer yourself. You crucify yourself. So I won't follow them. I'm so, I, will, I will remain uh, who I am. The natural beauty that God has given me, I will let that be exposed. In Africa, we used to say uh, natural beauty, natural beauty. They've all thrown those things away. Now they want to be like the Caucasian. They want to put all these things to let people know that, oh yes, look at me too. And then you have the picture like this and you have the picture like that. The Bible is telling us that, and if children, verse 17, then heirs, heirs with God, and joint heirs with Christ. If we, you see, we have been given joint heirship. Christ has preserved a, a blessed place for us. When he, he was telling his apostles, what did he say? He said, I have a mansion. I have, I, there's a mansion prepared for you. But we don't want the mansion. We want the worldly mansion now. We want to enjoy it now. But he said, if so be that we suffer, we, 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 we persevere in our natural ways, then we have crucified uh, the flesh in us and then uh, we will be glorified together with God and uh, we will be able to enjoy all the blessings because of Christ, because we have suffered. We have suffered. Uh, suffered means that instead of, uh, uh, you know, Following the world, you, know, you remain faithful. You remain humble. And uh, if you remain faithful to God, you know, God is going to remain faithful to you and give you all the blessings. And verse 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, you know, when people are doing it and you are not doing it, it means you are suffering. I, say, ah, I wish I could do it, but I'm not going to do it because I want to uh, crucify my body. I want to remain faithful to God. I want to stay, you know, in some other places. We, I mean, there are so many things that we can touch on. But we want to do it, we want people to know of the same thing that we do. There was even a time where women were showing off uh, their, their, this thing, their, 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 their uh, belly button, all this, and they want to show off. And, they, oh, ah. So God says that if we suffer in this present life, if we crucify our body in this present life, if we cut off, I don't mean cut off, but if we know that there's something that makes us do the wrong thing, now, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't watch it. Don't get involved. And the internet is so attractive to sin that you want to do this and this is being given to you. Even the commercials, they are com commercializing. You, you, you try to uh, watch something and then you are looking at this and then they are trying to encourage you that do this, do that. Children's uh, program, they are doing it just to attract, to control your mind, to control your, your decision, and then you are, your children is being controlled. You are being controlled, and then you are all falling into the worldly way of doing things. But God says, no, we have to crucify. We have to mortify the flesh, the fleshly things. You know? We have to crucify it. If you don't cru crucify the flesh, you know, then you are satisfying uh, the flesh and allowing it uh, to rule over you, you know, but which we will not do uh, by the grace of God, because God wants us uh, to follow 
his ways, his patterns, so that we can enjoy uh, the blessings that uh, he will give us. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and pray that we will continue to only follow uh, those things that will uh, only please uh, God and please him and uh, satisfy him so that uh, we will enjoy all the blessings in heaven that he has given to us. Let us kneel down, please, to pray.